Luther is named after him. That's another of these names that come into Western folklore. His name was Tariq. He was a Berber freedman, and he led the Muslim armies into Spain, and Gibraltar is an Arab name commemorating him. Jebel, meaning mountain, Jebel Tariq, Gibraltar. Jebel Tariq, Gibraltar. These armies went into Spain in 710, led by this um, chieftain, and they moved very quickly into um, Spain. There was very little resistance because of this dissension in the Christian ranks, and the Muslim conquest was fairly lightning speed. So by the 720s, the whole country more or less had fallen into Arab hands, except for the northeast corner. The northeast corner is where the Christian resistance expressed itself and slowly coalesced. And the Reconquista, the Reconquest as it's called in Christian history, the Reconquest almost began simultaneously with the Conquest. The Christian pocket in northeastern Spain, uh, in, pardon me, in northwestern Spain, northwestern Spain, was left there. And the Arab armies moved into the Pyrenees and on into France along the Riviera. And if you know anything about French culture at this period, you get all the romantic uh, songs and poems of French culture reflecting the struggle with the so-called Saracens in the Pyrenees, the Song of Roland. How many have heard of that? the chanson du Roland, the, the chanson du geste, etc. All of these cultural remnants uh, are glorifying this period of French arms as they resisted the Muslim conquest in the, in the Pyrenees going into uh, France is reflected in some of these French cultural masterpieces. Well, the one moment that Western culture is riveted on, the one moment that Western culture is riveted on is 732. 732, you may have learned in your classes, is the date that Charles Martel, the father of Charlemagne, stopped the Arab armies at Tours, also called the Battle of Poitiers, in north central France, perhaps a hundred miles south of um, Paris. And in the western mind, that is where the Muslim tide stopped and was ended. In fact, the uh, very famous British historian Gibbon, who wrote The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, said at one point in one of his works in a, in a uh, uh, maybe an excess of romantic uh, energy, he said that had the brave Frankish knights not stopped the Saracen hordes at Tours, then the sound of the minaret would today be sounding from Oxford Spark. That is a little bit of an exaggeration. I don't think, I think what happened to the Islamic expansion and don't forget we have an expansion here and the prophet died in 632 as i told you in the space of 100 years the muslim armies move as far west as tour in france and as far east as india and most of this was under the umayyad caliphate in damascus most was achieved under the umayyad caliphate in damascus that i just mentioned to you i think what you really had there was an advanced reconnaissance uh, movement you see, the problem with the Arab Empire at this point is it was too large. It had expanded too fast, and it really didn't have the infrastructure to, sur to survive. As soon as it had reached its maximum, it began to implode. It began to implode and fall in on itself, because in order to sustain a, an empire uh, of that grandeur and that magnitude, you really need uh, the logistics, the roads, the infrastructure, the communications, None of that was, was re really present. But you might be, before I get into the cultural area of what I want to talk about, I want to give you a few more historical anecdotes because I think this is a fascinating history that most people are unaware of. Um, you might be interested to know that Arabs not only moved into the Riviera area, and Arabs who were originally desert tribesmen took very well to the sea and became buccaneers and pirates, the sea being very much like a um, desert and the same sorts of uh, military uh, tactics can apply to sea warfare as desert warfare. Uh, they were very able buccaneers and so on, as we know from our own songs in the United States culture, the shores of Montezuma to the halls of Tripoli and so on, uh, dealing with uh, piracy, etc., of the 1700 period. Um, they also moved into the Alps. There was a Belgian historian, Henri Pirenne, who wrote a book called uh, Muhammad and Charlemagne, 
where he laid out his thesis that it was the Arab control of basically the Arab Sea. The Arabs made of the Mediterranean a, an Arab lake. They controlled all the islands, Majorca, Sardinia, Sicily, Crete, and so on. Uh, they, they had Spain. And uh, basically the Mediterranean became an Arab lake. Southern European culture in a Western sense ceased, ceased. And even because of the control of certain passes in the Alps, there are Arab place names in the Alps, if you look. Uh, in the 800, 900 year period, Perrin's thesis was that this shifted the axis of Western civilization northward. And that whereas before Europe was dominated by the southern part of its culture and its framework, after the Arabs made of the Mediterranean a mammoth lake, the center of European civilization, he being a Belgian, wanted to think about how Belgium became important, shifted northwards, and this was represented in his mind by Charlemagne. So Northern Europe became, in his mind, the result of this Arab conquest that took over um, parts of Spain and the whole of the Mediterranean, et cetera, et cetera. There's some substance to his uh, thesis, and if you look at it, uh, Europe has never shifted since. Most of the strength and economic development and power of, uh, of uh, Europe has remained in the northern areas, France, German, G Germany, the low countries, England, and, uh, and um, so on. Where Spain is concerned, the pattern really doesn't uh, hold uh, so well. One last story, and that is how did the Umayyad Caliphate shift to Spain? How did we get Umayyads, who had begun in Mecca, ended up in Damascus, finally coming to Cordoba in um, Spain? That is a tale of, of immense romanticism. The uh, Umayyads were ultimately overthrown by another d dynasty in the east called the Abbasids that took power in Baghdad. It was under the Abbasid that the Arab cultural achievement developed. And we'll talk about those Arab cultural uh, achievement that, uh, achievements that moved to uh, Spain that formed the background of the Western cultural achievements that resulted in the Columbus voyages in a moment. But in any event, this Abbasid Caliphate moved the capital from Damascus to Baghdad, and in the process ex extirpated all the Umayyads, who they blamed for being not good Muslims. Uh, the Umayyads were really Arab kings, not religious-minded uh, Muslims in the uh, exact sense of the word, and many religious-minded Muslims were disaffected and held this against them. So when the final reckoning came in 749, all the Umayyads were exterminated and their graves were uprooted in, in uh, Damascus. The whole